next to burn. I'm a London based street artist. Um, I paint uh, old run down walls. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, like to use the streets as my gallery. Um, and yeah, I like to inspire art to everybody. Yeah, so how did you get into the art? Uh, well, I've been doing art all my life, um, but I've been doing the street art for, I'd say, about, about over 10 years. And it's just literally going about in my mate's van um, to see all these building sites all these empty building sites that looked rough. They had a lot of uh, fly posters on them, they looked quite run down. And so I was just like, yo man, like these, these empty spaces, these dead spaces, they need some life in them. And at the time, uh, 10 years ago, I was working as a builder. So I was always like, you know, I'm going to build site, wearing a hybrid jacket, hard hat. So I thought, am I going to mix the artwork that reflects my environment? Yeah. So yeah, I just came up with the, the builder character and started drawing them on building sites around London and yeah from then just expanded different locations different spots went from builder to soldier to the culturing god all loads of different characters expanded from that one character mm. so that background is like the inspiration yeah. for all of your art yeah just originally yeah just I remember like uh, I was sitting on a building site and it was lunchtime and um, yeah I just I had a little I was sketching just a little sketch pad and I thought yeah how can I make my character into something that's more personal that like, reflects reflect me yeah. and yeah so I just came up with the hard hat the high vis and I was like yo bang that's the one you know what I'm going to yeah. take that on the street and I'm going to work on that and yeah uh, yeah been doing that character since then and just developed it basically yeah which one's like your favorite piece that you've done um, I don't have a favourite piece. I mean, my popular character is the Coldstream guard, the one with the bear skin hat. Mm -hmm. So back in the day, I used to call them uh, bee feeders, but they're not bee feeders. Bee feeders are the the guards that are at Tower Bridge. Yeah. So these Coldstream guards are the ones at Buckingham Palace. So yeah, like, over the past couple of years, just started getting their names politically correct, like the, the, the Coldstream bear skin hat guard. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, those are my most popular ones because um, they represent London. They represent the UK, and again, um, these these people that were in this uniform, they have a personality too. You, we would never know what they've been through, what mm -hmm. they've seen, whether you know they've got families or not. But so when I like do my characters as a bear skin hat, it sort of reflects them. You know, it makes yeah. it puts them on the map. Because uh, yeah, you, you, people go there, they're standing there, and you get people like next to them taking photos. But you know, these guys, they have emotions, they're humans too. Yeah. So yeah, um, that's another reason why I paint these characters, to put to put, paint, to put like characters in uniform, give them a bit more personality. Mm. Uh, that's it. Well, the piece that you've done for us, Behind All The Walls, yeah, yeah. that's obviously one of your signatures. Yes, yeah, it's, the, it's the bare skin one, yeah, that's why, yeah. And then you've got, you'll be inspired there, like what's the story? Inspired, um, I used to be a youth worker, when used to work in um, different uh, youth clubs around the city. And you know, when I started working for youth club around the city, I never realised there was estates in the city. When I went, to, when I went to the city, like Liverpool Street, Moorgate, that area, you will see the buildings and the, the bankers. And I realised there's estates there. So we used to, we used to, I used to be a youth worker. We used to work in these estates. And one of my head youth workers, they they said to me, "Oh, you should start doing messages with your work." Because I started doing my work where I had characters holding. Uh, a piece of white ball, but I used to have like a question mark or an exclamation mark. So my youth worker was like, yo man, you should you should maybe like write a message. And my youth worker said, yeah, are you inspired? Yeah. yeah. So with the current like pandemic, how I saw that you did that NHS piece, like describe that a bit. Uh, which one? I've done loads of them. The main one that got on all the articles, it got on like the BBC. Um, what one, the ambulance? Yes. Oh, that one, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I, I realised like during the pandemic, or yeah, during, during the lockdown, the first lockdown, mm. tons of boarded up shops. So for me, I was like, yo man, I'm gonna go out and paint. I'm gonna make the most of this. Um, yeah, act tight. I, I didn't care about what what, the, what Boris said, stay at home. Because I knew, I knew myself that if I was to go out, yeah, I'm gonna make an impact. I knew that. It's like I, it's like I foreseen it. So I always wanted to do piece related to NHS. So I was like, I'm gonna challenge myself on this piece. Instead of doing my standard characters with a message, I'm going to paint an ambulance. But instead of painting an ambulance, like what I normally do on paper, I'm going to do it on a big, big scale. And um, yeah, I did it. It, 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 was, it was out of the comfort zone, but I loved it. Um, and yeah, because uh, basically, um, my my, um, my brother, his, his girlfriend, 
she works as an ambulance okay. driver. She's just literally got the job a few months ago, so she's new. So, um, and the thing is, she caught COVID as well. She caught COVID. Um, she's fine now, obviously. Okay. But yeah, so I was like, yo, man, I've got to do this ambulance, you know, for, for, for the people and for her as well. Because yeah, she, she works with ambulance. So she, she was on the front line working hard and she, she got it as a result of helping others. Mm. So yeah, doing the ambulance was very close. It was yeah, very, very close to my heart I had to do that because it was my brother's missus. Um, so yeah. So with those pieces, like how do you choose what you're going to do where? And like, do you have to get permission? Um, I'll be honest with you, I don't normally get permission. I just go out um, and yeah, I've got a high-vis jacket. Um, and the reason why I'm not scared and not bothered about police or not getting permission mm. is I, I work with the ethos and the ethos is, like I always say, look for old run-down walls. So if, if anyone says, oh, mate, what are you doing? I'm like, mate, this wall was rubbish before. A lot of people thank me. They said to me, oh, thanks. I'm like, what for? Oh, you brighten up the road, you brighten up the street. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, you know what? If, if, if random people are telling me thanks, I must be doing something good there. So whether I get permission or not, if that wall is run down, old, I will transform that and make it look nice. And that's how I see it. I'm doing, I'm doing the streets a favour. Mm. It's, it's my duty to do that. That's, that's my input for society. Yeah. Making the streets look nice. No one, wants, no one wants to see old shoddy walls with rubbish graffiti on it. Yeah. You want to see nice art. You want to see good graffiti, positive things, positive messages. So that's why I want to go out now. I like to write positive messages. Mm. So I say in this current pand pandemic, last week I did a piece and I was like, stay positive, think smart. So yeah. you know, a lot of people suffer from different things. We don't understand. We don't know it. Everyone's got their own issues. But I, be, I what I've learned about art is art opens up people. So someone could be having a bad day and they just walk past and say, oh, be inspired or stay positive. That boosts morale and that boosts feeling. And that's what I like to do for my artwork now is have those positive messages coming through all the time. Yeah, so do you remember like when people started recognising your art and coming back to you and being like, wow, that was amazing? Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, we used to put my work on Flickr. So like, um, it's when Google was coming up and people were like, hey, I'll just see you on Google. So I used to go and Google images and um, yeah, like to see my work. And I was like, wow, oh, you know what? I didn't expect people to be taking photos of my work. Mm. So that gave me drive to, um, you know, do more work. People were paying attention to it. And, you know, obviously I didn't do it for the people to take photos of. I did it because one, um, I was living at home at the time and mum was like, yo man, it's too much artwork here. It's not much space. You either got to do it in the garden or just do it somewhere else or sell it. So I was like, yo, I'm gonna do it on the street. Instead of doing loads of artwork in my home, which no one sees, I'm gonna do it on the street because everybody sees it. You can't escape the street. You need to go to the shop, it's on the street. You need to drive your car, it's on the street. Yeah. So the streets are inevitable. They're always there. So why not use that as your playground? It's just right in front of you. Yeah. Do you think your artwork's been impacted by like the digital age of the media and social media and all that? Um, or it's been, or it's, it's been impacted as in like, yeah, I'm on social media. Mm -hmm. I only got on it five years ago with Instagram. Um, people were telling me before, get on it, get on it, you should do it. And I was like, no, because I, I, I mean, I don't, I still don't have a smartphone, you know. My, you know, I've got a simple, like my Nokia phone, like, you know, it's, it's sort of like, it's a mixture between a smartphone and, a, and an old phone. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Yeah, it's called Nokia Tup. Uh, right, not promoting Nokia, but <laughs> it, for me, this phone, it's still got WhatsApp on it, but it's still quite an old phone in that way. So all those years, I didn't have even have this phone. I had just old Nokias, and I wasn't really dealing with social media. But my mum, uh, um, my, my parents got me a tablet uh, for Christmas. I think it was Christmas 2014. And when I got that tablet, wow, man, I went into the digital world. I learned about Instagram. I learned about tags. So I was always on Twitter and Facebook, but I didn't really understand how to use the tags. So having the tablet really did, you know, enhance me. And I, I was taking better photos of my artwork, taking much better photos, instead of using a digital camera mm -hmm. and a tablet. And I went from an Acer, and now I use a Mac. And you know, yeah, it's great. And now I can do digital drawings on my tablet when I'm on the train. So yeah, the, the whole the whole idea of like, you know, traditional art is still with me. But yeah, I like to mix it up. Go, you know, go a bit new age. You know, go a bit 2020. You know, why not? Yeah, perfect. Well, thanks for talking to us today. Cheers.